Let us now talk about acute kidney injury. This is a pretty high yield topic. Okay, acute kidney injury just means that your kidney is not functioning as well as it should be. It's an acute decline in renal function and filtration of blood. Okay, and the degree of injury or how much it's functioning, we can look at either the serum creatinine, because if the kidney is not working well, then what's going to happen to serum creatinine? Where it doesn't filter well, serum creatinine goes up because it builds up in your blood. You can also look at how much urine output is, because again, the, the kidney is responsible for making urine. So if you look at these, you can see how much the decline in renal function is based on the serum creatinine or the urine output levels. Now there's three different causes or classifications of acute kidney injury. We base it anatomically. It can be decreased renal function due to something before the kidney. Specifically, it'd be decreased blood flow. Okay, So if you have decreased blood flow, then your kidney is not going to be working and producing stuff. It's like decreased uh, supply of, let's say you have a restaurant, and this is like because your your meat supplier is not giving you your steaks, so your restaurant is not producing. So the problem here is that your meat supplier is the pre-renal cause. Okay. Next is the intrinsic renal failure, intrinsic ki kidney injury. This is a problem with the kidney itself. So it's like a problem in the restaurant. It's like your your head chef's on coke too much, doesn't show up, and your restaurant is not producing. The food tastes like crap. It's like Gordon Ramsay. It's like you're getting raw food. Okay, but you get the idea. Next is post renal failure. This is a problem in the part after the kidney, so mainly pretty much the ureters. Okay, ureters, urethra, just something in the downstream urinary tract. So it's like the waiter basically. The food's delicious, but the waiter goes out and drops it, or just is lazy and doesn't deliver the food, and now you have a post renal failure. Okay, now let's talk about pre renal failure. Again, I just told you it's due, due to decreased blood flow. So what can cause decreased blood flow to the kidney? One, there's decreased blood flow overall, so hypovolemia, or you're just bleeding out or something. That can be a problem. Number two, problem with this renal artery here, because even if you have normal blood flow, but you have obstruction here, then you're going to have decreased blood flow to the kidney itself. So what's going to happen? GFR goes down, because remember, GFR depends partly on how much blood flow is coming to the kidney. And then you're going to have buildup of nitrogenous waste. Okay. So the kidney we need to use to get rid of all this nitrogenous waste. And if, it's not, if you're not getting all this nitrogenous waste to the kidney, then it can't do anything to get rid of it. So you're going to get built up of that stuff, and you get azotemia. Next, the kidney will sense this decreased blood flow, and what's going to happen. It's going to retain sodium and water, and it's also going to retain urea. Do you remember how it does that? Remember that classic pathway I keep telling you about? Where it's the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone axis going to increase that sodium and thus water is going to follow sodium retention we're going through the proximal convoluted tube is directly and then through through the collecting ducts through aldosterone okay now let's talk about the lab features and we're going to be able to we actually should be able to understand all of this just knowing that we have decreased blood flow we know have to know that the tubular absorption still works okay it's intact here there's no problems with the renal tubules themselves so how will urine osmolarity, osmolarity change? If we're reabsorbing all this water and some sodium, how will urine osmolarity change? You're taking all that water, so it's gonna, you're going to concentrate the urine a lot, so it's going to go up. Now understand, you're going to be re, re, reabsorbing sodium as well, but you have all these other solutes that are not going to be reabsorbed. Okay. So taking out water, leaving all those other solutes that are going to concentrate the urine a lot. What is urine sodium going to be? We're reabsorbing, reabsorbing sodium, urine sodium goes down. And the number here is going to be less than 20. Okay, next is the FENA. Remember we told you FENA was fractional excretion of sodium. So that is, how, what is the ratio of the sodium that was excre excreted compared to the amount that was initially uh, filtered through? So it's pretty much the same idea as this, except for it's opposite. This looks at, like, looks at how much is um, excreting. So if this is low, actually it's pretty much the same thing. This is low, and this is also going to be low. Because you're not excreting a lot, okay? Simple as that. It's going to be less than 1%. Because you're not excreting because you're reabsorbing. Finally, next we're going to look at serum BON to creatinine ratio. Note that we're looking at, looking at the serum BON, BON now, not the urine. So how will the serum BON, BON levels change? 
we're reabsorbing urea. Remember that we can pretty much think of urea and BON interchangeably. Serum BON goes up. How will creatinine change? Remember that creatinine is barely excreted or reabsorbed by the renal tubules. So serum creatinine stays about the same, no matter what, um, relative to the BON. Obviously, I told you creatinine is going to go up because of the renal injury. But your BON is going to go up even more because you're, going to, you're not even excreting that much and you're reabsorbing more of it. So this is an increased ratio. So it's greater. It's going to be greater than 15. Next, intrinsic kidney injury. This is due to intrinsic pathology to the kidney itself, and it's going to cause decreased renal function. There's three main etiologies of this acute intrinsic kidney injury. We're going to talk all in detail about all of these, but I want to give you a brief introduction. Acute tubular necrosis. Just look at the name. You can see necrosis of the tubules, tubular cells. Tubular cells die due to some, some insults, and then obviously your renal tubules are not going to work. Next, acute glomerulonephritis, so something like RPGN, remember I told you that RPGN is mediated by, mediated by autoimmune injury, remember, the two causes of RPGN are, there's more, but some things like good pastor syndrome, the posse immune vasculitis, something like, like Wegener syndrome, those are going to cause inflammation, Macrophages are going to come, they're going to cause inflammation, they're going to cause sclerosis, fibrosis. You have fibrosis of the kidney now, okay, and it's not working very well because of this, all this fibrosis. Same idea as, oh, inflammation, fibrosis, kidney, organ doesn't work, liver doesn't work, and cirrhosis, uh, chronic pancreatitis, you get pancreatic insufficiency because of all that fibrosis. All right, finally, acute interstitial nephritis. This is just inflammatory injury. It's usually after a drug administration, so remember, where does where do drugs get cleared out? Drugs oftentimes get cleared out in the urine, and they, for some reason they can cause some inflammation into the kidney. So I told you again, I keep telling you, injury gets damaged, tubular reabsorption is impaired, so that's key. As long as you can tell this thing on the bottom, you can answer most of your questions. So, tubular reabsorption impaired. Okay, urine, so what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to reabsorb sodium and water and urea? The answer is no, because absorption is impaired. So, now we're not, we're not absorbing water and sodium, so all that water is staying in the urine, so what's going to happen to the osmolarity? Or osmolality, I realize I say osmolality. At this point, I know, I know there's a difference in chemistry, but at this point, it's pretty much talking about the same thing. This one goes down, okay? It's too much water, dilutes all that urine, decreases urine, urine osmolality, osmolality. Urine sodium, how does it change? We do, we do not reabsorb sodium because the reabsorption is impaired. So you're going to have more urine sodium, so it's actually going to be greater than 40. Let's call it 40. Okay, F-E-N-E, F-E-N-A. That's basically looking at how much sodium we're excreting. Again, we're not reabsorbing, we're reabsorbing it, so we're going to be excreting it. So it's going to be increased F-E-N-A. It's going to be greater than 2%. Remember, that normal is 1% to 2%, but we're not normal, we're not reabsorbing, so it's going to be greater than 2% excretion. Finally, serum BUN to creatinine ratio. BON, what's, uh, serum BON, what's, what's going to happen? Decreased reabsorption of, BUN, of urea. So serum BON goes down. Cranny says this is um, unchanged. It's, it's increased. Again, I want to I want to emphasize again that creatinine is going to be increased in all these, okay? Remember, that's the, that's the whole definition of this problem. But the ratio is going to be different. The BON is going to be even worse because we're not even absorb, reabsorbing BON. So that's why this ratio is going to be down from normal. So in normal, you still get a little bit of reabsorption, but in this case, you don't. Okay, next is the post-renal kidney injury due to obstruction of urine outflow. Now, I just want to note that this only occurs if both of your kidneys are blocked or if the kidney has, or if the patient has a solitary kidney. If you only block one of these kidneys, your other kidney will be able to compensate your urine output and your serum creatinine will be okay. You'll still be able to filter through that remaining kidney. It's going to be able to compensate and you won't have a kidney injury. So, you can divide this obstruction into either an acute obstruction or a chronic obstruction. In acute obstruction, the reabsorption is still intact. There hasn't been time for your kidneys to be damaged. So, what's going to happen? You're going to, excuse me, let's, go back sorry about that so we get an obstruction here that's the whole problem this obstruction causes increased pressure in the kidney itself it's a it's build up the fluid can't 
can't go out, so he just builds up in the kidney, you get increased pressure. So now you have increased pressure, and you've got all these tubules here. There's increased pressure in these tubules. So now, increased pressure is going to push this stuff out. Increased pressure in the tubules, pushing out, causing more reabsorption of sodium and water and urea. Okay. So, first of all, I said, is tubular absorption intact? We said, yes, it is. And then now we're going to re increase reabsorption of sodium, water, and urea. So, increased reabsorption, reabsorption of sodium and water leads to decreased, uh, increased, I'm sorry, urine osmolarity because now you're concentrating all that remaining stuff in the urine. Decreased urine sodium. And then basically there's a decreased fractional excretion of sodium. Less than one percent, and then this one you're increasing urea absorption, so this goes up. Now I want to go back here and do a little correction here and say, actually, if you look at the data, oftentimes it's variable, so you don't even have to worry about this one. This one's variable. You don't have to. You don't. You're not going to get tested on it. I would, I would bet you money you wouldn't get tested on it. So next is chronic obstruction. The problem here is you have chronic high pressure, right? And chronic, this chronic pressure is going to cause tubular damage. We see this over and over again. Again, we see if you get obstruction, you get you get increased pressure, you get ischemia, you can get cell death, hypoxia and cell death. So that's not good. And you get tubular damage, so your reabsorption is impaired. Okay. If reabsorption is impaired, what happens to urine osmolarity? Urine osmolarity is going to go down because your water is not getting absorbed, reabsorbed, so there's extra water in the, water in the urine. Again, we're just going to say variable, so ignore this. What happens to the fractional excretion of sodium? Reabsorption impaired, more sodium is getting excreted, increased. What happens to the serum BUN creatinine ratio? Less absorption of urea, less serum BUN decreased. Okay, let me just clear this and just do. Okay, anyways. Cucane injury decreased renal function measured by creatinine and urine output. Pre-renal, there's pre-renal decreased blood flow. Intrinsic, due to intrinsic pathologies, post-renal obstruction of urine outflow. You need to understand whether tubular reabsorption will be intact or impaired. And once you do that, you can know the rest of this. You can know the rest of what's gonna happen, okay? So you don't have to memorize this, please don't memorize this. Just understand, it's super easy. Super duper easy. And now we're gonna go talk about these. We're gonna go focus on these go into the details of these little intrinsic kidney pathologies.